What's up guys? Today we got another unboxing. We're gonna be checking out some new speakers. First, if I can open the box, we got a Focal subwoofer. I've yet to see Focal sub, only their speakers. So this is gonna be a new experience. This guy here is the Focal 1000. Yeah, it's a little heavier than I thought. So weight wise for this, not, not crazy heavy, but it's, but it's uh, 47 pounds for this guy. So the grill is not magnetic. It's got little push pins right there, little push pin connectors. This is their new flex cone woofer. This is 12 inches. It's got a kind of a two-tone grill, gloss finish on the front baffle, Focal logo up top. Knuckle test. Around back, we have got a 1000 watt amplifier, bash amplifier. You've got your power on off or auto and on. Volume control knob, crossover from 40 to 160 hertz. Phase from zero or 180 degrees. It's not variable, so it's one or the other. Then you got your line ends, your LFE on the bottom, and then your left and your right. No XLRs on this guy. Then you got your main power switch and then your, your power inlet. I got two of these in, so definitely get these set up. But let's move on to the other speaker that we got, which is the Kanta Center Channel. We're gonna be checking out not all of the Kanta speakers. We're gonna be doing the center and then we're gonna be doing the, uh, the Kanta 3s. So inside here, we have an accessory, probably the grill. Indeed it is. We get two grills and then we have some documentation. We get the, the Focal membership card. We get some rubber bumpers, warning sheet to tell you not to uh, ingest the Beryllium Dome tweeter. Very nice packaging. Good job, Focal. This is also a pretty heavy speaker. All right, so what we got here up front, we've got the brand new AIL-3 Beryllium Dome tweeter. There's a nice uh, Focal logo up front. And then here we have two six and a half inch mid-bass drivers, flax cone, just like is what, what is on the, uh, the subwoofer. And around back, the connections, just like is what was on the Sopras, super high quality binding posts. It's got these rubber handles, which give you a nice grip. Get that, get those spades tightened on there. It is a ported design as well. And the nice thing about this is, of course, the build quality. Check out the wooden finish here. It's like wood, and then there's a lacquer on top of it to give it a nice, smooth, glossy look. Up top, we get this kind of a sparkly black finish that you would see on like a Mercedes or something. So there's like, little speckles in the paint which will reflect light and capture all these little dazzling sparkles everywhere. All right, so let's move on to the big boy. This is the Kanta number three. This is the flagship speaker in the Kanta line. It is 101 pounds. It's a beast, but look at that. Let's just tilt that back a little bit. Let's get some light on that. So what we have here is very similar to what's on the center channel. We have the same six and a half inch mid-range driver up top here, all flax cones all the way through. We have the same beryllium dome tweeter, the IAL3 tweeter. Then we have two eight inch woofers to handle all low frequency effects, all the low frequency bass. Frequency response on this guy goes down to 33 Hertz to 40 K. So you're gonna get some super high end crispy details the uh i don't think i mentioned it but the center channel went down to i do believe 55 hertz both of these speakers the center and the tower has a sensitivity of 91 db like i said this is a pretty big tower it is 58 inches tall by 19 inches wide by 29 inches deep this again is a two-tone affair the baffle has the same great looking sparkly gloss automotive finish up front on the top. It's got a glass top. I do believe that's glass with the Focal logo embedded under the glass. And on the sides, it's got the same wooden veneer as the center channel. Nice, shiny and glossy. 
Inside the box we get, we have the same welcome packet as we got in the center channel. This looks like the mid-range grill, which would probably go up top. It attaches magnetically. And then we have this guy here, which covers both of these eight inch woofers. Also magnetic. And on the front, there is a port up front as well. And then there is the Focal logo on the very bottom. On the back, we get the same binding posts, nice grippy texture, just one set. This is not by wireable, so only one set. It's again, it's ported on the back and it's also ported up front. Here we do on the very bottom, we get some adjustable spike feet. So this is uh, really nice. You can raise or lower the spikes just by turning the little knob there. So that's pretty sweet. I know we don't have any back speakers. We've only got the center channel, two subs, two can of threes where no surrounds. They were out of surrounds at the time of them shipping this to us. So we're just gonna do a, a three, three dot one system. Well, three dot two, I guess with two subs. For listening, I'll be hooking up the Focals to my Trinoff processor, and the speakers will be powered by a Macintosh MC257 amplifier, and a Cladescape will be used to playback demos. I'm going to be placing one of the subwoofers in the right front corner of my room, and the other in the opposite rear corner. This will give me the best response for my space. For demo playback, I'm going to listen to the speakers at full range, and I'll also give them a listen crossed over at 80Hz with the subs. A few months back, I had reviewed the Focal Sopras, which to me had the best sounding tweeters that I've heard. They were incredibly detailed and captured a ton of atmosphere. The Cantas with the better version of those beryllium tweeters should perform just as good, if not better. So I threw in a Quiet Place Part 2 since it is one of the best sounding atmospheric Atmos mixes out there. No surprise, the high frequency detail these speakers can reproduce was incredibly sharp and crisp with a lot of air and spaciousness. When you're watching this scene, your walls will disappear and all you'll hear is nothing but environmental effects gently immersing you. I'm hearing little insects chirping away several feet behind my screen and every little crunch of dirt and twigs with every footstep. The amount of micro detail these speakers can reproduce is some of the best that I've heard. And this is only with three speakers. I can only imagine the type of envelopment you'd get with a pair of Kanta number ones for surrounds. Since these speakers are so big, I had to feed it my go-to for LFE impact, Fury and Dolby Atmos. This mix hits really hard at 30 hertz and above during the tank battle and should rattle anything you don't have bolted down. If you've never heard a tank firing at another tank, it sounds exactly like this. Maybe. I think it's pretty easy to tell even over a YouTube video that adding a subwoofer is a definite must. Running the tower's full range for sure had some impactful presence, but they can't deliver that chair-shaking bass that this movie has to offer. These might not be the biggest subwoofers, but they dig very low and have enough tactile output that you can feel throughout your entire body, and they will give you that really big cinematic feel. I like how you can get that quick responsive kick from the towers with the subwoofers picking up the booming bottom end for a very nice full well-rounded experience. That being said, I did feel that these subwoofers were not the ideal subs to go with the Cantas. As I mentioned, they did a terrific job delivering the booming bottom end, and it's just that. I felt that these subs were not quite as refined as what I was getting with just the towers. The towers are fast and reactive, whereas the subs seemed slower and boomier and had a bit of overhang. They weren't as refined as the towers and didn't seem to keep up. I've heard other subs that can really slam and dig just as low as these Focal subs, but these ones were just a bit mushy. To be fair, I believe the Sub 1000F was meant to be paired with the Aria line of speakers, so pairing the Cantas with either the SW1000 or the Utopia subs probably would have been a better match. 
that's if you wanted to keep the entire setup Focal branded. The next demo I popped in was Interstellar. This movie's got some crazy bass response in the 20s in just the center channel. You already know what it's going to sound like with the subwoofer, so let's see how robust the center channel is going all full range. All engines look good, beginning roll program. Prepare for stage one separation. Stage one. All engines look good, beginning roll program. Prepare for stage one separation. Stage one. All engines look good, beginning roll program. Stage one separation. Stage one. The towers rocked, no doubt, but the center had a decent mid bass presence. It wasn't touching anything in the 20s, but you can tell it's not a thin sounding speaker and gives dialogue a weighty feel. Now, of course, the center was meant to be paired with other Cantus speakers so that they share a similar timbre, and these matched really great with the towers. If for whatever reason you are running everything full range, there's going to be a difference in bass response when something pans across the front three channels. But I'm sure that most folks are going to pair this with a subwoofer, which is going to take care of that. Snoke trained you well. I killed Snoke. I'll kill you. My boy. I made Snoke. And one final demo for the subwoofers. You know what it is. It's the intro to Edge of Tomorrow. These subwoofers have got some big boom, and so does the first few seconds of this movie. I'm not sure if we're even on the air. Now I did test the towers in my two channel review over on my channel Spare Change. If you're not a subscriber there then feel free to subscribe. For me personally I did feel that the Cantas, all three of them, were a bit on the brighter side of neutral, at least in comparison to the Sopras that we reviewed earlier. I myself do like a bright speaker but I did find these a little more than I could take for long periods. Being in a home theater setup I'm sure you can EQ the treble response but straight out of the box with no EQ, that was my personal and subjective take and it is the brightest speaker that I've had in my system so far. The great thing about how bright the speaker is, is that you get all kinds of micro details in music and movie soundtracks, but at the same time, it can also really highlight the shortcomings of a mix that isn't so great. And I noticed this in the center channel while watching a couple movies. The first one is during the shuttle takeoff in Interstellar. There's a lot of crackling in the center channel that's really amplified by the tweeter. I've got other speakers that do this, but to a much lesser degree. I gave him a humor setting, so he'd fit in better with his unit. He thinks it relaxes us. A giant, sarcastic robot. What a great idea. I have a cue line I can use when I'm joking, if you like. That'd probably help. Yeah, you can use it to find your way back into the ship after I blow you out the airlock. And now the other movie is Fury, about 32 minutes in. Traverse left. 800. Steady. On. Fuck! Ah! What? Traverse left. 800. Steady. On. Fuck! Ah! What? On. Ah! Fire! On what? On. Ah! Fire! On what? Down 15. Ah! Buddy! Fire! On what? Down 15. Ah! Buddy! Fire! On what? I think it's pretty easy to tell the difference between the two speakers. The Procella is a much more forgiving speaker, so it doesn't break as much as the Focal when the characters are screaming, and it is a touch softer. The Focal is much brighter, but you can hear the details like the debris floating in the air at a much higher pitch, but it does tend to crackle up top a bit. For the majority of the stuff that I listened to, this wasn't a big deal, but I knew certain speakers handled these two particular scenes differently than one another. I felt this was worth mentioning because if you're watching a movie at spirited levels, you don't want your focus being drawn away to a strangely out of place sound in any one particular speaker. At the time of this video, a single Kanta number 3 is $7,000, the Kanta Center is $3,500, and the Sub 1000F is $2,000 each. 
I felt in this configuration, the main shortcoming was the subwoofer. Not that it was bad, but the pedigree of the Canada Towers, I felt, wasn't a match made in heaven. The towers and the center played perfectly with one another, and would sonically disappear in my theater and in my two-channel setup. I love the mid-range clarity, which did vocals justice with a smooth, resonant warmth, and the towers can kick hard when you're running them full range, if you decide not to use a sub. For home theater usage though, I would definitely grab a subwoofer. The Cantas are impressively diverse speakers, but like I said earlier, I did find them on the brighter side. They can reveal so much detail, which is kind of a blessing and a curse at the same time. On certain songs and movies, they're one of the best sounding speakers that I've heard, and other times they're just way too over the top so possibly pairing these up with different equipment could result in a different experience. Overall, I've had mixed feelings living with these for the past few months, and I would have to say I'd recommend you give these a thorough audition before committing for the long run. Now keep in mind that this is a subjective video, and I'm just sharing my personal experience that I had with these in my setups. Well, those are my thoughts on the Kenta speakers. If you've had similar experience with them or a different experience, then let us know down below in the comments. You can check out the two-channel review on Spare Change and the Sopa review here on Audioholics. Now, if you want more information on these speakers, we'll leave some links in the video's description. As always, guys, thanks for watching. If you want, you can get additional content on audioholics.com and even more content on Patreon, which is exclusive to Patreon patrons. Subscribe if you haven't already, and remember, keep listening.